Hey everybody, today we're going to ask the question, what do ghosts, long-term care facilities, and Fleetwood Mac have in common? Join me on today's Jaywalk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jaywalker. Today you can see that I'm back in my creepy basement studio for today's ghost story for a Saturday. Today is episode 8, Hunter Hospitals Part 2. Hey, was that Fleetwood Mac? So, as I mentioned, I'm a nurse, and you know, prior to becoming a nurse, I worked in a long-term care facility as well as in a hospital. Today's story comes from a long-term care facility. So I know long-term care facilities aren't hospitals, but we're gonna go with, with that today, kind of lump it there for today's purposes. So today's, today's ghost experience, ghost story, revolves around one patient at this long-term care facility that I worked at prior to going back to the hospital as a CNA. So I'm working as a CNA, this is now, you know, a number of years ago, probably five or six years ago that this particular experience happened. And it, it all revolves around this one particular patient or resident uh, in, the, in the facility, the long-term care facility, they call them residents because they, they really do live there long-term. And so this, this resident that, that the story kind of revolves around, um, kind of an interesting, interesting person. So, you know, the, the facility that I worked at was not only was it just a long-term care facility, but it was also uh, it also had half of the um, half of the facility that was dedicated to memory care, so taking pa care of patients with dementia and different different brain problems. People who you know, if not quite not quite psych, but can definitely have some of those problems as well. And it was. Um, yeah, and, and so this, this patient, this resident, um, she was young for, for honestly the most part, you know, for, for being in that, being in that area where the, the kind of median age was, was somewhere, somewhere nearer to 80 or, or above, and she was under 60. And so the basic, basic reason why she was there was she had caused her brain to fail due to, you know, overuse of drugs and alcohol. And so with, with that came a lot of things like impulse control issues and things like that where, you know, wasn't always what she did, but Definitely what she said and how she said things was not within, you know, normal constructs. So part of, part of the deal also was with all of this going on, she was, um, she was wheelchair bound. Um, and we, and she stayed in her room pretty much 24-7. She very rarely came out of her room. We did have her in her wheelchair. We moved her around fairly often. And uh, with that, um, she also had a TV in her room. And one of the, the channel that she pretty much always had the TV on was TLC, the Learning Channel, cable show, a uh, cable channel, and it's got shows like Say Yes to the Dress, and there was a show at the time uh, called Breaking the Amish that was on there. And I, and I bring that up because uh, this, this resident yelled a lot. That was kind of her thing. Uh, she yelled. Uh, her short-term memory was not real there, so she would yell for someone to come in and change her brief. You know, she was incontinent as well. And, um, so she would yell for someone to come and change her breath, and she only remembered one name. So, 
you know, and that name was Linda. Linda, can I get a brief? And, you know, so even, even I was Linda. And, but she would yell. And, you know, generally that's what it was. Linda, can I get a brief? Um, and then some of the, sometimes when, when she was watching the TV, the TV shows that she was watching would, would kind of fold over into what she was yelling. Linda, can I say yes to the dress? Linda, can I break the Amish? Um, so, and with all of that, there were a number of the staff members, CNAs, you know, the nurses, that didn't like working with her. I'm not sure if it was just the yelling, but part of her yelling too, you'd go in and talk with her, and, you know, it almost always went around to, you know, um, you know, some of the stuff she said was not very nice. Now, had she been in her right mind, I'm sure that, you know, it wouldn't have happened, but, um, you know, generally the, the, the conversation would get around to, you know, well, I don't like you. Well, why not? Because you're a bitch, you know, and, or, you know, F you, you know, and full on F word and dropping the F bomb at us fairly constantly. And, you know, it was for some of the, some of the staff members did have a hard time with it. I didn't mind so much. So I, you know, I kind of liked going in there and I tried to make sure that every day that I, that I worked with her and out half the days that I didn't work with her, I would go in and make sure that I got called a bitch and she told me to F you, and it was kind of fun, honestly. Um, another thing that she really liked was a lot of classic rock. Her favorite band was Fleetwood Mac. That's where we're going with this. And, um, so one of the things that she would that we would do for her as well, she had a Fleetwood Mac CD. Uh, if I remember right, it was the the uh, live concert CD that they put out back in the 90s. And she she would listen to it for hours. And I think one of her favorite songs was Landslide. One of mine too. And I remember the day that she passed away. It was a Wednesday. I only remember that because it was my first day back on and I got, got the news when I, when I came on shift. Uh, she had passed away about eight or nine o'clock that morning and I got, didn't get in until about two o'clock in the afternoon and they told me that she had passed away. And the night that I came in that she had died, I was working over on the other, the other end of the facility. So half of it was this, the memory care side and then the other half was just more of a long-term rehab side of things. and. I was working over on that side, the rehab side, and so the experiences that I had that night, I had it twice. It was one, kind of one experience that I had twice during the night, and as I was there, I was fairly close to the doors to go over to the lockdown memory, memory care, and, and from what sounded like the other end of the hallway, but, you know, my, it was, probably closer than that, I heard somebody yelling my name, Jay, and it was, you know, definitely, definitely loud enough that I heard, and I turned around and saw the other CNA that I was working with that afternoon. Well, what'd you need? And she's like, I didn't say anything. So that happened about four o'clock in the afternoon. And then a few hours later, probably eight or nine o'clock that night. Again, I was right about where I was previously and facing towards where my back had been turned, you know, a few hours earlier and again, loud enough that it sounded like it was fairly, it was closer this time. And, you know, close to me, I heard somebody yelling my name again. And I know that the other CNA that was working with me wasn't right there, that there was no other people that were there. You know, I remember looking all over, no one else was in the vicinity, all the office people were gone, there was no one there either time. And, you know, more than anything, I, you know, at that point I got this distinct impression of, you know, 
some Fleetwood Mac on my brain. I was like, that's kind of weird. Um, she had just passed away. And, you know, my belief is that a lot of times people who pass away tend to hang around for a little while and make sure that everything's okay. And so my belief really was and is that it was this resident. Um, I hope to, you know, just to say hi and say, hopefully maybe thank you for, for taking care of, of her while she was alive. And to make things a little stranger as I left for the night, I got out to my car, turned on the, turned on the radio and it just happened to be on the, the classic rock station. First song that I heard was Landslide. What a fitting memorial. Thanks for joining me today. Remember, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for the notifications. Most importantly, share it with your friends. If you know people who like the ghost stories, share it with them too. Um, thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next jaywalk.